Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. It is Thursday morning, April 23rd, 2020. My name is Pete Renzulli. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me today. Um, if you find these videos helpful, please do me a favor, click down and subscribe. You'll absolutely get updates, uh, I think by email. Um, we're actually gonna take a little bit of a different twist today. Um, we're actually gonna do a, a little lesson on candlestick charts that I think you're gonna find uh, immensely helpful. Uh, and I'm going to warn you before we do it that once you see candlesticks in the way that I'm about to show you, you're going to throw out every other thing that you've ever learned about candlesticks, uh, and you're going to be amazed. You're never going to be able to unsee <laughs> what I'm about to show you. Um, and what's kind of exciting about it is that we're going to be able to use the weekly charts, which will help you start to form uh, trading ideas with a lot of conviction. And if you really think about it, that conviction in your ideas is really what separates holding good trades uh, and earning more from uh, seeing a trade move in your, in your direction really quickly and bailing on the thing just because you had a small profit and you didn't have conviction in the idea that it was really gonna follow through. Um, so we're gonna look at uh, three different things today. Um, what's kind of cool about it is we've actually had some price action recently that is almost textbook. Uh, right out of the candlestick stuff I'm about to show you. Uh, two of the biggest ones, there was Amazon and Shopify recently that had what I'm, what I've, um, <laughs> a little tongue tied. I'm gonna show you that's called exhaustion. So two of the primary movers of stocks or what I call fuel and exhaustion. Fuel typically starts a move coming out of consolidation. Exhaustion typically ends a move after a large order flow and after a uh, momentum type move. Typically exhaustion happens with a large range candlestick and we saw that in Shopify and we saw that in, Am saw that in Amazon. We're gonna go to those charts in a minute, but uh, I wanna first um, discuss very briefly, um, we're actually getting a flat opening this morning. And if you don't know what that terminology means, that ba it means we're basically uh, opening and closing at roughly the same number. So. Wednesday's closed and Thursday's open are going to be roughly the same number. So the obvious question is, why is that good news, Pete? It's good news because we've been having all these gaps lately that have been sucking all the energy out of the, out of the trades, uh, where the gapping, big move if you're overnight and holding those swing trades, but from an active intraday trading perspective, uh, it's been relatively boring because the market has kind of just traded sideways. So you've kind of been forced to... Um, you've been forced to make the list of stocks that you watch a little bit wider. Uh, so that being said, we're gonna go a little bit of news. Uh, we're going to um, see what happens on the candlesticks lesson, and then we're gonna go into some charts to put some real world analysis right into the candlestick chart. So again, I promise you, once I show you uh, what I'm about to show you, you, you you're gonna, you, it's like one of those things, like you're never gonna be able to unsee it, but that's a good thing. Because one of the one of the um, primary drivers of of making the leap from chart reader to tape reader, again chart reader to trader, is putting the pieces together in a simple manner that you can have conviction in your ideas, which makes it easier to say something's definitely going on or nothing is going on. Um, so we we do have um, uh, jobless claims coming out this morning, which is obviously going to influence us. I'm shooting this now three hours before the market opens. Uh, but let's go to the charts and we're going to take a look and um, see what's going on. Uh, so obviously stock futures are pausing, as I just said. The oil market is all over the place right now. Historic moves in both directions. Getting a ton of people asking me right now what to trade as far as oil stocks are concerned. Quite honestly, uh, it should not be a trade for most people, especially if you're home bored out of your mind and you're just looking to get involved because you're watching headlines and it's on TV every day. I made the distinction a few times about the difference between a trade and an investment. Anybody who is not an experienced trader right now should only be looking to put on a trade in oil that is a longer term trade or what I might call a position trade, something that you plan on holding six months to a year. I did speak to a few people yesterday and they have the right mindset where they're looking to take 100% risk capital and put it into an oil trade for the longer term for maybe where they believe prices are going to be a year from now. And I think that's a smarter way to do it. It's complete risk capital. Um, 
and it's not something that you plan on getting in now and getting out three weeks from now, because quite frankly, we're going to be all over the place with the way things are going right now, especially uh, in that market. Uh, as far as um, jobless claims, again, uh, we mentioned it previously, uh, I believe it was yesterday's video, uh, we're looking at 5.4 million jobless claims to be expected today during today's number. The interesting thing, which is super important about reading the tape, is as of right now, and three weeks worth of bad, bad jobless claims numbers, we have not rolled over. The market has not started to sell off. The market has not uh, found this number um, to be strong enough bad news, which to me is absolutely um, amazing. But again, we're reading the tape, we're not predicting. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see if that's uh, um, something that's gonna end up unrolling in, in a bigger way. Again, the market's always right. That's why we call it the smart money. Uh, another reason for the pause is a big EU meeting today on uh, coronavirus. So um, aid, stimulus packages, all of that kind of stuff is obviously huge for the market right now, influencing the market. Um, let's see where it unfolds. The stock market is not the economy. I, I think I, I had mentioned it in a previous video that um, everybody was talking about how great the economy was uh, prior to this, right? Everybody's saying that hopefully this is what's going to get us back up there again. But here's the question that somebody very smart said to me. If the economy was so great while everything was up here, why is so many people living paycheck to paycheck? Think about that for a second. It's a big difference. You know, everybody's asking me, why is the economy not the stock market? That's why the economy is how much money, do, how much discretionary money do people actually have to go out and do things? And I'm not talking about they could put uh, a $150 dinner on a credit card. If somebody's living paycheck to paycheck, the economy is not what you think it was, especially with the amount of people filing right now. So anyway, what we're going to do is I want to get into um, the only three candlestick patterns that you need to know to analyze any chart in a minute in any time frame. So the first one we're going to look at, and this is uh, these are actually three slides from uh, from the order flow masterclass. So I just want to give you a little snippet of of, um, of education here today. Take a little bit of a, a turn away from just looking at the charts. Um, so energy, energy candlesticks are what we have is called large bodies. So first of all, large body means that it opened and closed in opposite sides of the candlestick. So a green candlestick means that it opened down here and closed up here in any time frame. This could be a one minute chart. It could be a monthly chart and that's bullish. So the bulls were in charge of that window and that time frame. A bearish energy candlestick is one that opened all the way up here and closed down here, and that makes it a red candlestick. So how do you know the color, and how do you know what happened? The color of the candlestick represents where it closed in relation to where it opened. So if it's green, that means it opened down here and closed up here. If it's red, that means it opened up here and closed down here. So why is that significant, and why do I name them energy candlesticks? Energy candlesticks mean that a lot of order flow flowed through that time frame, flowed through that five minute candle, that 15 minute candle, and it opened in, opened and closed in opposite ends of that window. So in, in my course, in my training, and specifically in the way I trade, this type action, excuse me, this type of price action tells me something happened. So something that I'm not going to have uh, drop back to, or maybe we will. Um, what I'm generally looking for is when did a lot of buying or selling happen, and how can I scan for that? Because let's think about it. We make our money during energy candlesticks, and we're gonna talk about what that means in a second. The opposite of that, and where most people are getting chopped up really badly right now, which is in the opposite of an energy candlestick, and then we're gonna tie that all together to recognize consecutive energy candlesticks and how we actually trade that and get in and out of winning trades uh, to determine exactly if we have energy going in one direction, how do we know when that's going to slow down? And if we have energy going in the opposite direction, how do we know when that's going to slow down for a potential uh, entry and or exit signal? But here's the biggest thing that I want to talk about. And this is what I mentioned before in uh, the charts of Shopify and Amazon. Where the energy candlestick happens is what matters. So where it happens will tell you if it's stored up energy and beginning a new move. So again, remember I said energy candlestick where it happens, stored up energy, I call that a fuel candlestick. And if you can think about why I labeled it that way, fuel starts something, right? Exhaustion energy happens after a large momentum move, which is what we saw in Shopify. But the key to these last two candles 
is the stored up energy of fuel has large volume and exhaustion energy also has large volume, but one happens at the start of a trend coming out of a consolidation. The other one happens at the end of momentum and the end of order flow. It's called exhaustion. I've heard some people call it a cleanup print. I've heard some people, excuse me, I've heard some people call it capitulation. But the bottom line is this. Take everything I just said, make it simple, and start looking for large body candlesticks and where they happen. So the next one is what I call a melted candle. Okay, and this generally reverses momentum. And here's, here's the key. There's two spots where you're gonna be looking for melted candlesticks. But first I want to identify uh, what it looks like. And the simplest way to look at it is it's any candlestick that has a small body. And this is important here. The color of the body is not important because by its very definition, the fact that it's a melted candlestick tells you that there was indecision. And why is it indecision? Well, it's the opposite of what we saw in an energy candlestick is that the open and close are basically in the same spot. So there was no energy in that candlestick at the end of the day. So whether it's, again, whether it's a five minute candlestick or a weekly candlestick or a monthly candlestick, it doesn't matter. Traded all the way up here, traded all the way down here and then ended up in the same spot. So we're, look, we're talking about the end of the candlestick and the decision on what that candlestick means relative to reading the tape. So I know some people are gonna say, well, what if it had a large trading range? That's fine, but what we're talking about is finishing the candlestick, and what does that finish mean? So at the end of the candlestick, it has a small body. What does this represent? Two things, like right now we're seeing it in the major market indices, specifically the, the SPY ETF, as we've been discussing over the last week, we've seen, I believe it's eight melted candlesticks in a row. So in this case here, it's not necessarily reversing momentum, but it's absolutely showing massive indecision on the daily charts. And then when we went to the weekly charts, we saw that that was actually uh, an inside candlestick. So it's kind of cool how they play off each other. So again, number one is look for energy candlesticks. That's it. Keep it as simple as that. And then look for melted candlesticks that will either reverse momentum after a momentum move, or it will tell you that there's indecision in that time frame. So again, energy or indecision. Next part we wanna to get to is well bid, well offered. You probably, if you're, if you're a regular listener of, of, uh, of the videos, you've heard me mention well bid and well offered a lot. And there's a reason for it. They're the most powerful short-term indicator if something's going on in the stocks you're trading. So for example, right now, you can see here, well bid means higher highs, higher lows, right? So here is higher lows, here is higher highs. Close above the previous high, so this close is above that high. The close is also above the previous close. That makes it well bid. Now there's also some candlesticks where you can still have well bid, where it's higher highs and higher lows, higher lows, higher highs, that finish red. So you can see that there's, there's different stages of well bid and well offer, and that moves you higher or lower from your A plus trade uh, versus a potential reversal. So for argument's sake, let's say this candle is still well bid, but it's red. That would actually be what I call a bearish U-turn with a potential change of trend or change of momentum would be a better way to word it, although it's still well bid. So you have to respect the fact that it's well bid but be cautious about that um, reading the tape in that direction because it reversed on that one time frame. So you see how there's uh, uh, little nuances to actually reading them. To me, well bid is more important because it's well bid until it's not. Um, but right now we're actually seeing that in the SPY weekly. So we'll take a look at what that means. Well offered on the opposite side is exactly the same thing, but lower highs, lower lows, and this close is lower than the previous low, and this close is lower than the previous close. So you can get a feel for, we'll just go through them quickly right again if you wanna take a quick screenshot. Energy candlesticks, large body candlesticks, stored up energy versus exhaustion energy. And those have volume, I call those fuel versus exhaustion. Melted candles have small bodies, the color doesn't matter. They represent indecision. And when you get melted candles after four to six well bid candlesticks, that's usually a reversal of those candlesticks. But any chart you're looking at now, which we'll go to the chart right now, it's very easy to spot well bid, well offered and melted candlesticks and how that plays into whether or not you should be aggressive. When you throw in, in inside candlesticks on top of that, 
uh, price action just come, becomes very clear, which hopefully now you can see why I don't have a lot of, um, I, I was almost going to say garbage on my screen because I, I don't mean that. Everybody has a different way to trade. I don't have a lot of indicators on my screen because I want to read pure price action. I want to be a tape reader, which means if I'm going to be a profitable trader, I need to get as close to what's actually happening as possible. And in my experience, and hopefully I could teach you the way I'm doing it, this is the simplest, clearest way of doing it for me to have conviction because all I'm looking at is price action. So you can see now, look at the last week in the SPY, matter of fact, the last 10 days, look at these melted candlesticks. And that should immediately tell you nothing's going on. Look at the well-bid candlesticks. Look at well-bid but indecision, followed by inside candlestick, followed by inside candlestick, or pretty close, followed by inside candlestick. So that led to a reversal, right? So you can start to see now how you can tell well-offered or well-bid, and we're actually gonna go on the weekly charts because it's a little bit more uh, pronounced. So you can see here multiple weeks in a row of well-bid, okay? A little bit of a well-offered there, but then it goes well-bid again for three weeks in a row. So you can get start to get a feel for how easy it is to uh, give yourself a bias for whether or not you want to be long or short. So you can see here now, this is actually a good example here in the SPY where we actually had a reversal candlestick into inside candlestick, into well bid, into well bid. So what should have happened this week was, um, if the market was still strong, we should have immediately saw uh, another well bid candlestick. And right now we are actually inside on the weekly chart, which should not surprise you um, because of what we see on the daily charts. So the reason um, that this is tough trading this week so far in, in the market, if you're trading ETFs or, or, or index futures, there's some stocks to trade, um, is because of this. We're seeing indecision on the daily charts. We're seeing melted candles on the daily charts. We're not seeing the energy type candlesticks where those are the larger range days where a lot of uh, buying or selling opens and closes at the opposite end of the day. And those are the trades where you end up holding to the close. So the obvious question that comes in is how do you spot um, how do you spot one type of day versus the other? Well, the easiest answer is you go into the day uh, looking from one day to the next, and you're looking for well bid or well offered from one daily candlestick to the next, from one week to the next, and the more that stays in sync with perfect price action, meaning the weekly chart is well bid, well offered, the daily chart is well excuse me well bid, weekly charts well bid, the daily charts well bid. The, the last price is above the previous high, above the previous close, and above today's open. And that's generally speaking why, if I can pull this up, you'll see me during the day scanning a lot from change from the open, because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for today's price action to be in sync. And I'll actually go down on a shorter time frame here to show you how we're actually watching this during the day. I'm looking for today's price action to be in sync with the longer time frame. So if we're looking here, that's the price action from yesterday in relation to the opening price. So we had the gap higher, which technically made a well bid candlestick, despite the fact that there was no energy, but there is actually price action from here to here, right? So you can imagine this is a large green candlestick and this entire day is well bid because this whole price action is above the previous day. Obviously you'd like to see, you know, you see it like we're gonna, uh, a big green candlestick, but, you get the idea. So during the day yesterday, this was what we were looking at most of the day where we were below the opening price. So today's price action was consolidating this large move. And then the end of the day or the rest of the day, we were looking for spots um, to get long. So hopefully uh, that cleared things up for you a little bit, or maybe gave you just a little bit of a lesson on how simple candlestick charting should be because you want to be confident going into the day and saying, I know exactly what I'm looking at. I don't need to struggle to figure out all of these moving averages and indicators, it's just look from one candle to the next. Now, the next question you're gonna have is, well, what if it's choppy? What if there's nothing to read? What if it's all over the place? Well, the answer, what does that tell you about the price action? What does that tell you about the tradable opportunity in front of you? If you're looking at stuff, and generally speaking, I'd recommend if you're looking to trade, uh, whether it's day trading or swing trading, it's easier to identify these candles uh, on weekly charts. Uh, simply because there's more price data and you get a lot less um, gap up, gap down. It's easier to read the price action on the weekly charts. If it's hard to read, it's not there. That, that's, it's as simple as that. One of my very first trading mentors, Joe, way back in the day, his name was Joe Blazy. 
Um, he told me if it's hard to read, it's not there. And it's such a simple quote. Uh, it's super powerful as well, because if you're having a hard time seeing it, you're going to end up making it up in your head. Um, so anyway, I just want to get to a couple of trades. I hope that helped you today. Um, I want to talk about a short sale. We've had a hard time. If the market actually rolls over, um, there's been some opportunity um, to trade. Why isn't that coming up? Oh, CB. I'm sorry. I wrote the wrong symbol down. Um, you can see Chubb, actually. We've had a hard time finding short sales if the market turns, over, turns around. I'm not saying I want a game plan for it. If the market turns around, Chubb actually is already weak, broke the down, broke the uptrend, the short-term uptrend, and actually had a well-offered day yesterday that closed on the lows, and it has some room to go. So if we roll over, this would be one of the stocks we'll be looking to short tomorrow. Uh, a couple of stocks on the long side that I didn't cover in yesterday's video, TTD had a really solid bullish day yesterday with some room to go as well. Looking for a buy stop above yesterday's high. ARMK is one also. This is a little bit tighter. This is one that's going to go more in the in the um, watch list, not so much to trade today. I want to see it get above 25 and stay there. Uh, again, keep that in your trading journal. Uh, Yum Brands actually had a really good breakout yesterday as well. You can see the uptrend is continuing to follow through. And you know what's kind of cool here is look at uh, if you're looking to trade stocks and determine which stocks are in play on a regular basis. Look at how few uh, melted candlesticks we see here. So Yum has had good daily price action where you can't look at it. And again, I'll just flash over to the spy and look at how many melted candles there are here. This is, is driving you to drink, right? So Yum is another one. And uh, PayPal, which is one that we called out earlier in the week. Uh, it actually did have another good day yesterday. And look at the energy candlestick. That's what you want to spot, right? You want to scan for energy candlesticks. Uh, but we also have this resistance level coming up, which actually is just a little bit higher than this. Um, so we actually said there was one more, two days maybe, if you watch the video. Yesterday, we were actually looking for an open lower to retrace. It actually opened stronger. So it was actually stronger than we expected. So we're looking for some follow through there as well. So that's today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Hopefully, you got some really good uh, tools to put into your tool belt right now to go in and look at charts and keep them really simple. If you have any questions about the uh, charting setup, uh, that goes from simple charting to understanding how to read the tape and put those pieces together. Absolutely leave a comment below the video. I'll get it to you as much as possible. If you have any stocks that you're looking at the tape through the lens of what I just showed you in the charts, uh, definitely type the stock, the stock into the comments. Give a lot of detail. So I'm not trying to figure out what you were writing. Say, is this well candles? Is this well, well offered? Is this well bid? Uh, what does this mean as far as momentum or energy candlesticks versus uh, indecision candlesticks, which we call melted candlesticks? Uh, so anyway, that's uh, Stocks for Breakfast today. Thank you so much for um, being with me today. Be safe in the big world. Uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about whether we should be reopening things or not. Personally, I'm staying safe uh, until I think it's okay. Um, and hopefully you guys are all doing the same as well. So have a great day, everybody. Today is Thursday, March 23rd, 2020. Let's go make some money today.